Welcome to the Web Design Business Podcast with your host, Josh Hall, helping you build a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Welcome in, friends. This is episode 203. This is the first part of a little mini two-part series on selling SEO for your web design business. I did a couple recent interviews about SEO, and originally I was not going to link these two together. I was going to give them some space. That way we didn't talk about SEO and have that take up a couple of weeks. But what I realized as I was looking back at the interviews I recorded is that this interview that you're about to hear with Farzad Rashidi is really about figuring out whether you should even offer SEO in your web design business and maybe how far you want to go with SEO. So I thought that was a really great type of part one style episode on if selling SEO is right for you and practically how to go about it and how to feel confident with it. And then I just recently did an interview that is going to be part two coming up here next, actually in just a few days, we're going to do a whole week of SEO in this one with uh, the co-founder of uh, Pathfinder SEO, which is a tool to help you sell SEO as a recurring service. So I had these two episodes in my bank and I thought, let's make just a fun week of selling SEO. So how does that sound? If that sounds good, uh, great. Because, well, whether you like it or not, that's what we're doing this week. So part one here, my guest Farzad is, gosh, what a cool dude. What a great guy to talk with. Super smart. You'll find out here about innovation in, well, companies in general, but also in particular with SEO. He is, uh, well, I guess his official title is the lead innovator with a tool called Respana.com, which is a actually really, really great tool, as I came to find out, with link building. Their tagline is link building made easy. So as you find out if SEO is right for you, um, I highly recommend it. Respana is awesome. It is The website itself is great. And they've got all sorts of amazing resources to help you with link building. Obviously, there's a bazillion SEO tools. We'll get to that here. But uh, this could be a really nice tool in your toolbox if you are going to offer SEO. Whether you offer SEO as just a part of your builds, like I did, and mo- most of my SEO for, for full transparency was done just on-site SEO. And And then I did a little bit of recurring SEO services, which we'll talk about in the next episode. But um, this tool would have been awesome, quite frankly, to have as a really cool link builder. And there is a free trial for it. So Respondent.com is where you can check that out. And then Farzad, I think, will give you a lot of really good things to think about and ponder here as to whether SEO was right for you and how to do it. And side note, fun note, I had no idea that this podcast was ranking in the podcasting realm officially in the top 1.5% of all podcasts that are in all the directories. So that was pretty freaking cool. Farzad used his tools to find out that this show is one of the top shows. uh, Well, it's becoming one of the top shows definitely in the business and entrepreneurial category, definitely in web design. And to be a part of the top 1.5%, my gosh, I, all I have to say is thank you to the amazing guests. Thank you to Cam and Nathan, my VA and my editor. And thank you for listening because this show does not rank if people aren't listening, but it's really cool. Just transparently, we're getting like around 3000 downloads a week on average now. So, um, that's awesome. That's so freaking cool. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled about this. And uh, I'm really thrilled for you if you're interested in SEO. So we're going to start out with if SEO is right for you. Um, if you need help with SEO and you would like to go through, like if you were like, gosh, I wish Josh had like an SEO course. Good news. I do. I actually do have an SEO course. You can go to joshhall.co slash SEO to dive into that. It is basically an SEO for web designers course. It'll take you through all the basics of SEO. It'll help flush out all the main aspects of SEO that I've learned over the years. And it will help you for, for building a nice SEO foundation for your clients as well. So if interested after this episode or after this week, uh, joshhall.co slash SEO to join my SEO course today. Here's far as odd. Let's see if SEO is right for you in your suite of web design services. Farzad, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks for taking some time to chat today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited, Josh. Yeah, uh, you are my first friend with that name. So I had to ask you how to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> so the emphasis is on far, right? Farzad? 
Barza, that's right. I, and at Starbucks, I just tell people my name is Bob because I, I feel like <laughs> that opens up a whole uh, conversation. I have to explain myself to everybody. So I think Bob is the way to go. <laughs> I would definitely not peg you for a Bob, a Bob but I love that. Uh, well, awesome, man. I'm super excited to chat with you. Uh, SEO is not I wouldn't say it's my, my area of expertise. Um, and the landscape of SEO is evolving as you know, you know, constantly. So I am really excited to, to pick your brain today about what's working right now in SEO. And then more importantly for, for a lot of the listeners who are web design business owners about if this strategy is right for them and, and what we can do nowadays. So I'm really excited to, to hear your thoughts on this with where the landscape is right now. Before we dive in though, do you want to let everybody know, first off, maybe where you're based out of, and then um, just maybe if you could summarize what you do, that'd be awesome to give us some context. Sure thing. So uh, we're based out of Rockland, Maryland, which is a 20 minute drive north of DC. Not sure what are you familiar with the area? You're Based out of Iowa, if I'm if I'm correct, Ohio, Colum Columbus, Ohio. Ohio, actually. Yep, there we go. Yep. Gotcha. I'm wearing, my, I'm wearing my Columbus shirt for anyone who's <laughs> seeing it. Um, but we did go to D.C. last year. I love the area, and I used to have uh, some family there, so I don't know it too well. But yeah, look, awesome area. It is pretty nice. Yes, sometimes the weather gets a bit uh, too cold over the winter, but you know nowadays it's, it's beautiful outside. So uh, we're we're happy. But anyhow, so just to go back to your original question, Josh. Just to give you a little background, I actually started my career in marketing uh, uh, back in the day at, at when Visme was a small company. Have you heard of Visme before, Josh? No. Mm -mm. Never heard of Visme? All right. Um, so if you've heard of tools like Canva or Prezi, which are design tools for creating gotcha. So Visme yep. is somewhat of a competitor. Um, however, we mainly focus on businesses, so SMBs and enterprise. So I joined as the first marketing hire. The product was very solid at the time, but it was a bunch of engineers and they were like, okay, we built this very cool product that helps businesses create like visual content, like presentations, infographics and whatnot. Now let's go out there, let's go out there and start sell this thing. And uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, great. But as a bootstrap company, we obviously didn't have the hundreds of millions in budget like some of our competitors did at the time. So we had to very quickly uh, come up with a customer acquisition strategy that we could easily scale over time without having to spend a ton of cash. Gotcha. And so putting ourselves in our customer's shoes. So let's say if you're looking to create, for example, an infographic for one of the podcast episodes you're putting out there uh, and, and you don't already know software, you're looking for a tool. What's the first thing you do, Josh, to, to go find a software or find I, a new product? If I'm not asking a colleague, I'm going to Google it. You're yeah. going to Google it. And that, that's yeah. normally the case for most products, right? So, Or, a lot of people, or I would ask a colleague and then check it out online and then Google there it. There we go. See what the Either way, you're going to Google it like. at some point. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so that, that's normally the, the customer journey for a lot of businesses, that their potential customers are actively looking for their product or service to solve their problem. So we knew that from day one, understanding that, hey, if you, stop, if you start showing up in places where people who are looking for a product like ours would naturally come and find us versus us having to chase after every single customer, then we can easily, easily scale that and that channel and be able to kind of have that customer acquisition costs under control. So we basically started to, um, you know, write, start writing blog articles and we build a bunch of landing pages and doing the good old, you know, SEO things. <laughs> and, and guess what happened, Josh? after months of work. I'm guessing, well, I'm hoping it worked out pretty well if that led you into the SEO world. <laughs> Unfortunately, did it, it did not. Okay, so, the opposite round. Okay. Right. So we put put together this fancy website and it was responsive. It was good looking. We put it out there and it was completely crickets. Mm, like okay. nobody come to our website. And I'm sure a lot of people experience the same issues that once they build a new website, they put it out there. You're like, okay, where are all the traffic? coming in, right? Yeah. So unfortunately, it, we were also in a very competitive industry. Like yeah, design is, is brutal. It's just uh, that there's a lot of big guys in the industry. So as a tiny startup at the time, it was kind of hard for us to be able to uh, compete. And it, it, say if you, Josh, go and Google, like I actually, if you, if you have access, just open a little incognito tab and go and Google the keyword, for example, presentation software. That was one All of right. the key terms we were going after. Presentation software. Currently Googling. 
All right. So All how right, many every- page results show up on that on that um, keyword? Like how, you see at the very top, it shows you how many web pages Google went through. Oh gosh, almost 900 million results, okay. 848 million. 900, so close to a billion search results for that keyword, all right? And some of the top spots are obviously ads, which most people just ignore because you don't want to click on an ad. And what, what are sure. some of the organic results to see at the top? Well, so we, let's see, most of them ads, so Visme, visme.co is the first all organic. Right. Perfect. Awesome. A live so case, I always love a good live case study, <laughs> by the way, because the pressure's <laughs> on to make sure it works. I know, right? Well, the thing is, uh, obviously, if, uh, search results fluctuate. So it's lucky we are number one. It fluctuates normally in the top three. Now, what you see now is is a uh, is one out of you know hundreds of thousands of keywords that Visme's mm-hmm. website is ranking for. And and right now, we've grown the traffic just to give you a snapshot to over two and a half million in monthly organic traffic. Oh wow! Uh, that's in terms of paid advertising is worth about one and a half million dollars worth of paid advertising that we're getting for free, quote unquote, right? Obviously, it's not free because we have marketing spend and and making sure that we're writing content and building pages. So getting to that zero (laughs) organic traffic to two and a half million was quite a journey. And right now, Vizmi's, we're getting about 20, I would say, to 25,000 new users to our platform without it is, without us spending a penny in paid advertising, doing cold outreach. Obviously, obviously, these are stuff that we are still doing, also experimenting with, but it's not a main channel for us. So basically, we had to figure out, okay, how are we going to get from um, you know almost n- 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 nobody, you know, just yeah. a website that's just newly built, to the top three search results for our target terms where there are 900 million search results for this keyword. Right. It's just mind boggling. So we were like, okay, well, there's got to be an answer because if you're Google and you just rely on quality of content, quote unquote, right? So say, yeah, so you write a blog post and it's very highly informative and it, the website loads fast and it's got all the right metrics and everything's great. Say you're in the top 1%. <laughs> you're still going to be in the hundreds of thousands, right? right if there are right. 900 million web pages tar- targeting the same, same keyword. So the, the numbers are just crazy. So what we had to figure out was to take a step back and see, okay, what is the main driver uh, that, of these rankings? Because we want to make sure we understand how the algorithm works. And Google, the way they actually beat all the other search engines back in the late 90s, was based on an algorithm called PageRank, which basically evaluates websites based on how other websites, other authoritative websites in your space are talking about them and, and mentioning them through these backlinks and, and mentions. Is that and, like and, the, basically the beginning of domain authority? Is that exactly kind of where that's right? Are? Yes, exactly. So domain authority is just an estimate of okay, how would Google perceive this? Obviously, these are made up metrics by SEO companies. This is not actually what Google uses, but uh, but but the principle of okay, the more relevant authoritative websites in your space are talking about that particular website, that means that that website is obviously more authoritative. So then things get interesting, don't they? Because then it's not always under your control who or what is on your website. But now you also have to convince other people to start mentioning you and start talking about you, which is <laughs> infinitely more difficult. But that's been a ranking factor for 200 years for a reason. And that's the one constant that hasn't changed. And what's Google doing over time is obviously becoming smarter and picking these up and understanding okay, what are some of the actual um, relevant links. And they're becoming very smart at picking those out. And, and nullifying some of the junk links that people you would normally go and buy sure. some backlinks from some junk websites. So um, those don't really help. So the process, we were like, okay, we, we know this, but it's easier said than done. <laughs> because trying to convince other people to start talking about you, start mentioning you, is, is very difficult because it's not under your control. Right, so that process right. was something that we were doing completely manual in terms of identifying what are some of the websites that we had to reach out to and understanding, okay, um, how are we going to incentivize them? How are we going to work with them? And the whole process was sort of done by duct taping a bunch of different tools together and spreadsheets and manual uh, work. And what we did 
at Vizme was just to put together the whole process that was already working manually and put it in a software that was, that was sort of our secret sauce for about a year and a half. And it just worked ridiculously well. <laughs> we were like, guys, this is awesome. So we decided to release it as a standalone tool. And that's sort of how Respondo was born as a separate product out of his marketing it. team. And, and the rest is history. Got it. So you you take on the marketing role of visme.co, which, it, and, and, you know, apologies for not knowing about it. Quite frankly, I just really haven't ever utilized presentation softwares until recently, other than just keynote. Um, no I actually problem. really only more recently have I started doing actual slide decks. Even my courses previous to this were a different way of doing it. So more, I've really only been doing like slide decks the past couple of years. Um, but it's, it's really impressive to know and interesting to know that you started out where a lot of people start out in SEO, which is like, all right, here it is. Can't wait to see what traffic we get. And then it just falls flat. And I'm sure we're going to dive into a lot of the different things you've done to get to this point. And then it sounds like for sure, I love that you guys created Respana and then basically put all your secret tips and sauce and all that stuff in there. I am curious about the timeline here. What was the timeline between when you launched and then to now? How, how, uh, when, when did that, you know, when did, when did you take over with Visme and, and get that off, off the ground? Sure. So Visme was incepted. Well, the uh, company was founded back in 2013, but we didn't actually start, um, uh, doing content marketing and all that good stuff. Cause at the beginning of any software company, you're still in development mode. So you're in sure. build mode, building a product. And what we did basically, and I wish we had started sooner, but at the time things weren't quite as it's popular nowadays and uh, content marketing wasn't as big of a deal back in the day. And, uh, and I, I would leave in 2015 or 16. That's when we really started working on our SEL. Okay. And yeah. So over the course of the last, I would say five to seven years, that's when we really put our emphasis on, uh, getting organic traffic and it's been, um, on a hockey stick growth mode. Yeah. Since. Oh, that's awesome. Well, and I love something you said a little, a little while ago, which is the idea of like organic growth instead of just paid acquisition, because it's extremely costly that way. I mean, yeah, right. you can, you know, you have to invest the time and organic growth with SEO, but that's what I did to grow my, my brand right now is I did zero paid ads. The only paid mm -hmm. ads I do now are occasional, uh, social media ads. I still don't do Google. Ad. Yeah. There's a little, yeah. yeah, a little, a little bit of that. Like that's it. So yeah, yeah it takes some time, but it's helped me and it, it made my business scalable, as you said, because right. I had more money to either pay that's myself right. or do more stuff. So I definitely, is that, is that fair to say that that's one reason why businesses might want to consider SEO is that, you know, there's, there's less of a cost barrier there. It just, it takes time and more, right. um, I guess not, not necessarily know how, but just the basics of SEO. I, I guess the question is, is if you're on a budget, is SEO the way to go? Well, that's the thing. I mean, we were uh, as, uh, stri as strict of a budget as you could think of because we were paying out of pocket and we were literally a bootstrap tiny startup at the time. So um, and the way I always um, um, advise people to do things is in terms of allocation of resources, not necessarily the qu quantity of the resources. So mm. meaning that, hey, in order to invest in SEO, we spend 20% of our marketing resources on content creation. The other 80% goes into promotion and link building, oh, which okay. is the opposite ratio of what, what most businesses do. Hence why uh, we, we are very hard to beat just simply because nobody invests as much in promotion and link building as we do. And, um, and that's what's really been the secret sauce. But as far as the uh, resource go as a company, when you start, there's only normally three um, I would say channels for customer acquisition. One is cold outreach for sales. If you're selling a very expensive product and, um, and your customers aren't aware of the problem they're solving. So say you are own a medical device company and you sell like $50,000, like medical robots, uh, people are likely not Googling that kind of stuff. So you yeah. are better off just not <laughs> even having a website, just go hire a bunch of salespeople, go door to door, start selling. Right. Uh, two is paid advertising, which is normally a the, the margin or ROI is diminishing over time because when you, um, since they use a bidding system, uh, first of all, the cost per clicks and acquisition goes up exponentially over the years. And also at the same, because there's limited spots for ads. So obviously right. you, you are, um, have to pay more in order to stay up there more. 
Um, well, especially are, with the term like like presentation software, I don't know right. how. I mean, do you know how much those ads are? Those first few yeah, ads cost for clicks. I believe it is between five to ten dollars a click or something like that. Okay. Um, and because yeah, I know sure. you guys have an ad there. It's 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 Visme.co, it's Prezi, and then Digideck. I think I've heard of that before. But, right. And yeah, then, and, uh, I've, I, and that's something I wanted to say is also in terms of allocation of resources, right? So not saying don't do cool outreach. We have a sales team at Visme, right? We have people that are SDRs and A's. We have a, a paid advertising team. So we're, we're a team of close to 100 people now. So we have the, the uh, money to spend and, and we're experimenting with different strategies. But they're infinitesimal in terms of actual top line revenue generator compared to our main acquisition channel, which is SEO. And that's only what we do at Responda is, is focus entirely on SEO, we, even though we are a much smaller team than Bisbee because we, the company is much newer. Gotcha. Now, the, uh, to, to uh, not leave off that point, so the paid ads, I'm not against it, is something that is a very expensive way to get top of, uh, top of line. And there are some specific ad, ad, ad types that paid advertising works well, like retargeting is great. So if you can get people into your website first, so they're familiar with the problem that they're solving and then retarget them with video ads later on, it has bare some ROI. Uh, but um, it, again, it depends on the type of business you have also. Like, for example, if you sell T-shirts and, and like uh, pants, like you're better off just running Facebook ads than invest in SEO because it's just not the right acquisition channel. Mm, good but point. if the customers you're targeting are actively aware of the problem trying they're trying to resolve and they are doing some research online through Google, then it's almost a it's almost idiotic not to spend time on SEO because yeah. um, that, that's where all your customers are. So you got to first understand the type of business you're in. How are your customers, your potential customers are doing research, going through that customer journey to find a product or solution that you're selling. And then if Google is the answer, which for most businesses there is, and for some it isn't. So um, it's not a one size fit all solution or acquisition but channel for everybody. Probably business. everyone listening. It's definitely, <laughs> definitely it something yes. I would take very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> hence, hence why I'm here. Right. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't come and like talk about SEO to an audience that, 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 that wouldn't benefit from, but then SEO in and out of itself is a puzzle. So uh, it, it's not a, um, it, it, it's not a one, time uh, thing that you do and you're like, okay, I'm done with SEO now. It's an ongoing effort where you're consistently finding what I call opportunity keywords on uh, mm -hmm. understanding, okay, what are some of the keywords that get the highest amount of volume, lowest amount of competition and highest commercial intent. And then you create web pages uh, according to the user intent for each one of these keywords. So if it's an informational keyword, write a blog post. If it's a uh, bottom of the funnel keyword, uh, you create a money page, which could be a landing page. If it's a consideration stage, create templates or gated content, et cetera, for each one. So depending on the user intent. And then uh, once you put out these pages, that's 20% of the work. The other 80% goes into promotional link building. That's where a lot of people stop. That's what nobody I was just going to say, try. that's where so <laughs> many people stop. That's where I stopped often when I, particularly when I started this brand. And then a lot of people that I've seen just being in web design for over a decade, I see a lot of people do that. I see a lot of people right. create blog posts, they post them and then crickets, like you talked that's about right. earlier, but yeah. Uh, and then move yeah, on. So, yeah. So here's what I would recommend. So if you have a small team, which we did and we do still I respond, we're a small team. Um, if you don't have the resources, don't produce so much damn content. Mm. Like I, I, it's just mind boggling to me. Some people are like, Hey, Farza, we don't have the resources to spend time on promotion and link building. And I'm like, but you're producing two pieces a week. Stop producing so much damn content. Mm. Dedicate some of those resources into link building. Just produce one content piece a month, spend the rest of the month promoting and then go to the next one. And as traffic starts coming in, you increase your customer base, you have more revenue, go hire more people to increase the frequency, but don't That's change the so allocation. Great. That's a great point. I think so many people need to hear that if they're going to blog because, <laughs> or, or any sort of SEO strategy, quality over quantity. And it's, it's true. I mean, like I'm doing at least generally two pieces. I, I generally do about eight pieces of content now on my stuff between podcasts and at least a couple of YouTube videos. I do a lot more on socials, but as far as on my website, it's generally about eight a month. So it's about two per week, but I kind of have my system in place for the level that I'm at right now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But I know people who are blogging every day and doing stuff, but it, 
it does seem like the people who get the biggest results in SEO tend to have a little more in-depth content if it's going to be a blog post, more information right. based, and they're getting content for, for you. I mean, I still get comments on some of my old blog posts. I used to be an Elegant Themes blog author for, for Elegant Themes who created Divi. Um, that's uh -huh. how I got my start in, in this side of the industry. And some of my blog posts, I still get comments and I still get people referencing those five years later because right. they were in depth and they were good. And I don't mean to, you know, I don't mean to sound all boastful about that, but they were really, they were good. They were in depth and they were good. And that just, it proved to me that good content, as long as it's not fluffy or overdone, it will last years. That right, Would you right. say that's something important to know? Like that's the beauty about SEO. It can last years, the benefits. Right. You know, the, the way I would rephrase Josh is that I would say quality content is not a plus. It's a necessity. It's mm. like, it's, it's just basic, like foundation things you need to do. Like, um, when I say produce less frequent content, it's given you're consistently producing quality content. And I say even produce less frequently when it comes to quality content, because as I said, even if you're producing quality content, you're in the top 1%, you're still in the hundreds of thousands yeah. of search results that have equally as good content as you do. Even if you're part of that 1%, if there are 900 million search results for that keyword, right? So what I'm, what I'm advocating for here is that you spend time and resources producing that content, now go promote the heck out of it. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. And I, so I want to talk about some of these promotion strategies that you talked about. I want to get into the 80%. Um, before we get to that, though, I'm curious. I just personally, I want to know when you guys, when you, when you launched VizMe and then you realize, shoot, we're not getting much traffic right now. It's kind of, you know, standing still. What was your mindset then? Like, did you come to this realization that you were like, we got to promote? Or like, what were the first steps that you took to essentially get on the right track with SEO? So, you know, there's no secret, Josh, the back things are important. There's something that Google explicitly says that this is, hey, this is how we rank content. And it has been for 20 years. So it wasn't a big secret that we that we had an aha moment. Uh, we knew that just producing you know, content wasn't enough. And so what we started to do was to start focusing more on, per, uh, on, on promotion and outreach. And we started getting some results at the beginning. It was very slow and we needed to kind of sort of scale that process. So it was something that was quite tedious to do, but it was resulting in direct track. So if you actually go find, it's funny because if you go and take a look at our number of referring domains, which is the number of websites in our space that are linking back to the Vizme website, and then compare that to our traffic trajectory on Google Analytics is identical. Like you can oh, okay. they sort of lie on each other. Obviously the numbers are mm. different, but if you get it per scale, it's identical. So not saying it's a direct um, uh, correlation, uh, but it is uh, basically one of the main factors uh, that, yeah. that sort of helped us get it'd there. Be a heck now, of a, it'd be a heck of a coincidence if it wasn't that's directly right. related. Yeah. Right. It, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's, I mean, it's something that Google says, and it's been proven. And I'm surprised a lot of SEOs are like, oh, backlinks are dead. I'm like, backlinks aren't dead. You just don't know how to get them. <laughs> so if you're just trying to put some content on your client website and charge them yeah. 10 grand a month and don't know how to get backlinks. And you're like, oh, those are not important. Don't worry about them. Yeah, that, no, I totally agree. It makes sense. And it's funny. I was just thinking what we're doing right now whether anyone realizes this or not, is an SEO strategy. You it and is, I are having yes. this conversation. <laughs> we're doing a podcast episode, but we're not just doing a podcast episode. We are creating backlinks for each other. Exactly. And I mean, we're not, you know, that's not the the sole intent of this. At least I would right. hope not. I hope you want to just have a good chat about this to help people, but it is exactly what this is. Like, I guess there, I say that to say there's a lot of SEO strategies that are not exactly what they seem. Like, who would have thought that a podcast is an SEO strategy. Like I'm just going to all here, the curtain is pulling up. I'll tell everybody one of the main <laughs> reasons I started this podcast among many is because I knew this was one of the best strategies for growing my brand online via SEO, because I'm going to have awesome guests who have audiences and they're going to be able to promote it. And that's going to generate interest. It's going to build no like, and trust factor. That's so important with sales. And at the core, a podcast is an SEO strategy. So yeah, I, just, exactly. I wanted to throw that out there and get anyone didn't realize what they were listening to because that's exactly what we're doing 
Exactly. And that's something that we have a guide on. Uh, it's actually so uh, on our responder website, we have an average strategy guide. Ooh, it's free. Right. It's ungated. Everybody can access it. So if you're Where, free. Where's that at? We'll link that. Yeah, of, co- of course. Just navigate to respawna.com, R-E-S-P-O-N-A.com. And at the bo- very bo- bottom of the footer, is a call, there's something called an outreach strategy hub. And mm, we just cool. give you ready to use recipes and templates for each one of these uh, strategies. One of which strategies is the podcast outreach strategy, where folks, and again, none of these strategies are bound by a respawna. You can replicate a lot of them yourself manually. Uh, Responder, again, does no magic. It just brings a whole process under one roof so you can do it 10 times faster. But if you're just starting to get out, don't have the cash, don't worry about it. You can still do a lot of these yourself manually without having to spend you know, money on all these fancy tools, Responder included. And uh, so what the podcast outreach strategy, what we advocate is that, hey, uh, you, well, so what our team does and how I got on this show, Josh, is that our team member, Dylan, who's one of our marketing team members, he looks up on Respana the names of people in our industry who go on other pod, other people's podcasts a lot, mm. and uh, and 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 he automatically tells you three things about these podcasts. One, these podcasts accept guests because not all podcasts do. Oh, <laughs> Two, that's true. they're relevant to our space because they obviously have interviewed someone in our space, and also makes our life easier uh, when it comes to pitching because we can use that episode as a hook and say, hey, Josh, came across an interview with like Amy Porterfield and love the fact you guys talked about XYZ, implying to the podcast host that, hey, we're not just blasting this email to everyone. We've actually done our research and, and found your podcast. Yeah. We actually have something of value to offer to your audience, right? And, and I can and, tell, and by the way, I can tell that I, I get a lot of requests now and I can tell <laughs> when it's just like an automated thing that just came from a robot or if somebody is actually organically do it. In fact, what a timely comment. Somebody emailed me today about being on the podcast and they called me John. And I was like, well, they're uh, not coming <laughs> on because they didn't even get my freaking name right. <laughs> That's right. Yes, absolutely. So I actually see yes, uh, John Bong, uh, who's a uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. very great SEO who, who was on your podcast. And Dylan actually yep. have sent me uh, the conversation that he's had with you. And uh, so that that's something I also respond to helps with. So it, it pulls like the last episodes of your podcast and then helps uh, as, as outreachers to actually add some personalization to it. And, uh, and not sure whether you notice, Josh, but your podcast is actually on the top 1.5% global rank podcast, globally what? ranked podcast in the world. What? Yeah. I'm Share. not sure what you noticed. Yeah. Harzan, tell me more, man. No, I am so bad at, <laughs> I, this is how, look, Hey, this is a good point though, because I am not an analytics like kind of guy. I, I have an awesome SEO gal who does some keyword research for me every once in a while. Um, but I just, produce content, try to make it good and stay organic. So, but that works. Like I have not done anything intricate or I've never done keyword research for the podcast. I just share what's going on right now. And that's what works. So I hope that's, and and it's a different venue, right? So it, it probably, this strategy would probably not be very successful when it comes to SEO, but it's definitely from Google, but it's definitely an effective method uh, for podcasts. And, and that's yeah. why it's not, it's a great channel to, to thrive in, uh, cause it is on un- underserving the barrier to entry is higher because you need, you know, get good guests to come on and you need like, uh, you know, editors and, and you need to produce these audios, uh, audio clips and all that stuff. So, uh, well, I'm sure you get a lot of these pitches. So basically, hence why I was saying that I don't spend time to go on every single podcast. I want to make sure if I'm spending the time to go on a podcast, I'm building relationships with podcast hosts that are actually interesting people like yourself and we build that partnership together and uh, you know i'm doing a mastermind with uh, a group called empire flippers i'm not sure you've heard of their podcast they also are doing great things in our space so it all started from a podcast interview that we that i just went on their podcast and and, and so it's not just purely an seo play it's also a great way for us to build partnerships and that's what we sort of advocate our response as our motto is don't spam, build relationships. So, uh, so this, this strategy is just one out of a gazillion different strategies that we follow to build relationships with people who have uh, influence in our space, and and we can build mutual beneficial partnerships with them. And 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 you don't have any, you don't need to have a lot of fancy tools to get these done. Yeah. Um, you, you can do start doing these yourself manually. And once it hits a point, you're like, hey, I can't scale this. Like, I'll go on like three to four podcasts a week. So you can't do that manually. Uh, so what yeah. we had to do, so, so responded then comes into, comes into play and you're like, okay, it's $99 a month. 
and it saves you like tens of hours a week. So it just becomes a no brainer at that point that, yeah, of course, yeah, I got, I'll pay for this tool because, you know, I'm and, just already uh, spending hours. I'm I'm scrolling through this outreach strategy hub on your site, which we'll definitely link to. But let me just can I list these out real quick just for everyone? Sure. In case yeah, of course. Because it's no awesome. Problem. This is like I didn't know you had this. This is a incredible resource. So here we go. Let's take the let's pull the curtain up on SEO right now. So this strategy outreach, which is free, we'll link to the in the show notes. So you got link building. The category is link building. You got reverse image search link building. I want to ask about that. Infographic outreach. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Unlinked mentions and you've got guest posting. That's a lot of that is common in the blogging world for sure. Particularly when it comes right. to like guest posting, uh, you've got content promotion, you got resource page links, which is a biggie. That's one, one of my most popular pages on my site now is my recommended tools page, which I'm going to do a lot more to moving forward. Um, blog post mentions, which are a biggie huge thing, especially if you're going to link to tools or services. Um, that's a biggie. You got broken link building. What's so broken link building. Is that a link that you just find it's broken? Then you capitalize Offer on that? A replacement. That? Yeah. Offer yeah. replacement. So, okay. And I actually tell you my favorite ones, uh, while you're here on here, Josh. So we mm -hmm. have a three-step process of building backlinks and building backlinks for us. is just building partnerships and starting conversations. So we normally start with a transactional collaboration when it comes to content promotion. And that starts with saying, hey, I came across your website. Here's what I'm happy to do for you if you were to do this for me. And that normally starts off by a competitor backlink analysis and uh, so the, the competitor backlink strategy, as you see on the outreach hub, and also uh, the uh, anchor text strategy. I'm happy to give you an example. So these are just opening the conversation line and saying, gotcha. hey, here's what I'm happy to do for you. And in exchange, uh, you can do this for me. And then, but that's just a starting point. So then it takes us a step forward. And then once we have that partnership in the bag already, then we hit it up with a guest post pitch, which is normally what a lot of people do on a, on a, as a first step, which I uh, advise against. And then the last mm -hmm. step becomes a partnership. So each one of these strategies normally are done at a different stage. So for example, let's say if you come across, so you put together a blog post on, for example, podcast marketing. Let's just take that as an example. All right. Now, how in the world are we going to go build back things to it? Right. That's, that's normally a, a big question I get every day. They're like, sure. Hey, put together this content. It's kick ass, but I don't know how to get people to link to it. So just follow the process, man. It's easy. So yeah. step one, there's a couple of different strategies I recommend. One is to start with articles that are non-competing with your blog post. So for example, if someone has written an article on, Hey, what are some of the top marketing strategies for 2022? And they mentioned, podcast marketing as part of this strategy. And they're like, hey, you can go on as guests on podcasts. That's a really good strategy. But that's it. Because the focal point of that article is something different. Then your article as exclusively about podcast marketing would actually make contextual sense for someone to link to. It's like, hey, if you want to learn more, here's some templates and stuff that you can, you can get to. So what I would do is I'll reach out to you and be like, hey, Josh, you know, came across an article on marketing strategies for 2022. And I love the strategies you mentioned, marketing, podcast marketing included. We actually followed that process ourselves internally. And I'm happy to reference your, uh, uh, and, and our team just put together a comprehensive guide that I think would make a nice fit. And if you were kind to of, as I mentioned, I'm actually writing a guest post for this other website, for mm -hmm. example, Crazy Egg. And I would love to reference your guide uh, on that article that I'm writing. What would you say? So that gotcha. normally, yeah, that normally opens up a, a door to conversation. And then once you go in and add that link, there's about five to 10% success rate on that. So you have to remember, not everybody's going to say yes. And that is okay. You don't need everyone to say yes. Right. Gotcha. And then the second step, we're like, okay, Josh, thank you so much for adding our link. Now that we have our foot in the door, I'm like, by the way, I was running your website, uh, joshhall.co on uh, Hrefs or SEMrush, one of these like SEO tools to help you do a content gap analysis. Mm -hmm. so you can see who their competitors are. Like for example, you guys are competing with Divi, that space, and like divlife.com, which I'm assuming yep. just are about like- um, Yeah, some of the nine. They're my best friends too in the Divi world. Yeah, that's what's perfect. great about it. Because that's perfect. another thing you have awesome. in here is com competitor mentions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what I can do, so what I do then is that I run these two websites and I've, and, and Ahrefs or SEMrush, these tools will tell me the keywords that they're ranking for, but you aren't. 
So then I just take a screenshot of that and like, by the way, Josh, I noticed that uh, Div Life guys and um, Divi, Divi Dead Space guys are both ranking for the keyword, like for example, best um, web design tools. And, but you guys aren't. And I, I happen to have a writer in house who's more than happy to contribute an article. He's a web designer himself and would love to contribute an article to your site listing his favorite tools. And there's no obligation, no fees or anything, uh, just just a little uh, uh, content uh, favor on our end. What would you say? 80 to 90% say yes to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's funny already- too. Like, I have another student who just yesterday messaged me and said that he got um, requested from another partner of mine and one of the tools that I use asking if they'd be interested in being a, a, doing a guest post, like a guest blog. So I know they're reaching out to different people. I think particularly maybe some of my students who are killing it right now in their web design freelance space. And now they're getting Uh opportunities to guest posts and it, yeah, it's just like it all, this weird SEO organism online that's just all linking to each other. It just, (laughs) it grows like a tree, right? It's just like all these, all these roots spread and yeah. Exactly. And yeah. And a lot of people just go straight up, start with a guest post. And that's a big commitment to ask someone that you don't know. Yeah. But once you already have that collaboration in the bag and you've already provided value to them, then it almost becomes a no brainer for them to accept that from you. That's a great point. I think, I think you're right. I think a lot of, well, I know a lot of people start with guest posting cause I get those sorts of emails a lot now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, first of all, I don't do guest posting cause it's my personal brand. Everything exactly. on my website is me. So it's a different mm-hmm. business model than most businesses, but also even if I wasn't, even if I had a different brand name, um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to hire somebody who just randomly messages me. It's going to take one of these different different strategies we've talked about. It's going to be like a layer or two back, which I think is what exactly. you're hitting on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, precisely. You got it. 100%. And then that's not the end because that, that took a quite a lot of work to get here. So then third step for us, the Narnia is the partnership, which if you are also a person who contributes to other websites, you're like, Hey, Josh, are you also contributing to other people's websites? If the answer to that is yes. You're like, Hey, why don't we put together a little sheet together? And as you are writing content, if it would make contextual sense, uh, you reference some of respond articles. We've got a, over a hundred, some blog articles that we mm. fresh and produce. And I do the same for you. And we make sure we have a tracker sheet that we kind of make sure things are fair and square. So next time as you're writing, so over time, you're going to end up with a network of like 10, 12 of these partners. And about half of them are going to be inactive. They're not going to be reciprocating. No worries. You're going to end up with a network of like five or six of these really, really good partners that regularly contribute to other websites and also mention your blog articles. Now, here's what happens. Next time you go, and create a guest post on another person's website, you're not only referencing your article, you don't even mm. have to do that. You're referencing five or six of your partners on that post. So what happens is that over time, that creates a little ripple effect that now once you spend the time to write a guest post, you can then hire a good writer to actually do this because then you're getting five or six partner links that also indirectly results in about five or six other banks on their website. So I don't That's mean to good. overcomplicate things. Yeah. But but the three step process, you start from a transactional collaboration, move on to a guest post, and you turn them into partners. And, and once you kind of go through the whole cycle, now we just have one person on our marketing team at Respana who manages our link building. And this person builds over a hundred media mentions backlinks to our website, quality backlinks that are do follow or from that hit a certain criteria, not just any mention. Over a hundred every single month, month over month. One person. <laughs> now we yeah. didn't get here overnight. Obviously it takes some time. Now an agency would probably cost us close to a hundred, I would say 50 to a hundred grand a month <laughs> to mm. do this for us. But we, we had a response subscription at, uh, that he uses. <laughs> it's like so, 99 so you, bucks a month. You eat your own dog food as far we as using this tool. Yeah. yeah, and our uh, biggest customer is Visme. So yes, that's we, awesome. we indeed use our tool pretty much, pretty I, often. I, I want to stick right here with, uh, I call it co and working with your competition. I think this is really important because I have found this to be extremely beneficial in SEO. I think a lot of people tend to look at their competitors. So for, for a lot of people listening, web designers, freelancers, business owners who are in an area where, yeah, they might know the other web design shops and agencies who might be technically their competition. Um, but something I was just speaking about with one of my students is he landed his first $10,000 client 
based off of working with his competitor. They don't even start at $10,000. So they were like, Hey, we like you. We like what you have to say. Would you like this client? They're just not in our, our, you know, at our starting point. And for him, that was huge as a, as a small team. So, um, I'm big on this idea of co-opetition when it comes to SEO, what do you feel about, you know, linking to your competitors with blog posts like best, you know, in my case, best web design shops in Columbus? And this is kind of a case study type question. If I were a web designer in Columbus, Ohio, and mm -hmm. I did a blog post about like the 10 best web design agencies in Columbus, even though they're my competition, do you think that would be worthwhile doing? And we would, they'd get backlinks. Would that help us pull up? What would your thoughts be on that? Like one particular strategy? Absolutely. So as far as working with the competition goes, almost everybody will work with the somewhat our competitor. Uh, so the because you want to work with websites that are in your space, we have nothing to do with a cooking website. So even though they're not a competitor to us, they're not also very relevant. So we don't even bother reaching out to websites that are just not, not relevant. So responded, we're in the SEO space. And a lot of websites that we work with or uh, publications are also in the SEO digital marketing space. So one way to on another, we are somewhat competing with each other on a certain level. Now, direct head to head, like if you're running a shop and this person is across the street, that causes some complications uh, when it comes to communication that sometimes may fall through. But companies that are not directly head to head competitors with you, for example, let's say uh, Respana and a company called SEMrush, right? Um, we are both in the SEO space. They also have a wing of their product that's somewhat competing with ours, but we could care less. I've gone and done webinars with, uh, uh, with them and we are actually integrating their product into Respana through an API integration. Uh, so they can, you can connect, so their customers can connect their SEMrush account to Respana and work awesome. in joint, uh, joint, yeah, hand in hand. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, Direct head-to-head -head, um, competition probably is not very realistic uh, to bear fruit just because sometimes uh, things fall through. Obviously, you know, you don't see eye to eye, eye to eye yeah. 100% of the time. But if they're in your space and, and they're somewhat competing, that's almost always the case when it comes to any sort of collaboration because you don't want to be working out with people that um, and working with people that aren't relevant to you in the first place. Well, and then particularly for web designers and web business owners, pretty much everyone has a little bit of a different suite focus. of services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a focus. So like some people are really good at conversion design and development, but SEO copy, not their strength. Whereas their competitor right down the street might be really good with SEO and copy, but they're not great at development. So that is like the prime example where don't compete with each other, like work together. So I love that. I think it's so important. I was going to say like, if you can't beat them, join them, but I don't think that's the right statement for this context. I would say just work together because you're always, particularly in web design, very rarely are you going to have the exact overlay of services or like my example a little bit ago with my student who uh, landed his first $10,000 project, they had similar services, but they weren't at the same level. So a lot of people who are at a level are looking for somebody below them who, you know, like for me as a web designer, when I started scaling, I really never found a great person to refer people who just needed like a simple website for under 1500 bucks, that type of client. I stopped taking them on, but it would have been awesome to have somebody in college who like, you know, 1500 bucks for me when I was, you know, 20 years old would have been awesome. So, uh, all that to say these SEO strategies do start with, you know, relationships and right. what do you, you you guys are all about building, you know, building relationships, not spamming, which is kind of what you're talking about. So it's weird to think that SEO kind of really starts on a human level, right? Exactly. And that's what a lot of people miss is that they look at it like it's science. And it is. Uh, there is quite a lot of nerdy stuff in there. And I, I've i written a book actually on this that I sort of go through step by step in terms of how you find keywords, how you write content on the Visme site. So if folks are interested, I've written a free ebook. It's called uh, Visme Marketing Strategy. 
so you can go in and just Google that and it's a free ebook. You're more than welcome to download. It's like, it's not like 160 pages. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Do tend to blabber sometimes, but there's quite a lot of, um, uh, screenshots and step-by-step instruction there. You can go in and copy and sort of replicate for whatever niche or, uh, Is that the, you have. so I'm, I just looked at a marketing strategies. We used a bootstrap Viz me to 4 million users. Is that right? right? We're, we're okay. at 14 million users now. So, so wow, like, okay. <laughs> needs to get updated. That's right. Yeah. But awesome. part, what we still do to go through the same process. Our process hasn't changed. What's, so I was just going to ask, what's your favorite of everything we've talked about so far? We're talking about backlinking, guest posting, uh, you know, all the things we we've covered so far. Um, what, what's your favorite thing to do? You know, you see, Josh, the thing is, uh, with SEO for it to work, you need to be good at all of these. And that's what's really tricky about it is you, you can't just focus on one part and expect it to be successful. Uh, I just did a demo to that for a company that they're like, hey, I heard backlinks are very important. And I came across Respond. Can you help us get backlinks? And I took a look at their website. They got a one-page website filled with like affiliate links. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Like, don't waste your time or money on responding yet. You still got some work to do. You need to go hire a web designer. You need to you need to build a, a, a side map and, and understand, okay, what are some of these keywords we're trying to target? Build landing pages, content. Uh, you can't just go jump the gun. So what, what, what I'm trying to say is that's a long way to answer your question is that it's kind of like building a house. You need that foundation to unpaid stuff down first. So that starts with a site structure, writing content, and also the technical side of things. So like your meta title, meta descriptions, uh, making sure that the site is responsive and loads fast, all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And then once you do that, that's just the foundation. You're at ground zero now, congratulations. Now you wanna start building on top of that. And that's where you build that building with the facade and the windows and the cabinets. And that's where the link building and promotion aspect comes into play. Now, once you start building that and you start continuing to produce content, now you wanna spend equal amount of time or more um, and promotion and making sure that now you get some eyes on these content pieces. So there isn't really a certain aspect that I would say, Hey, you can focus on this part and be successful. Uh, you kind of have to do it all. Uh, and, and I know it's kind of daunting, especially for one man shows or for people that are, you know, smaller teams with very limited resources. You have to take into account that we also have had, had the same problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> As a bootstrap company. So you you want to do it, take it step by step, stop producing so much content, just produce one page at a time and take it as each take each page as a project and kind of take it from there. So it kind of like building Legos. You can't have a yeah. Lego without like the whole packet, right? You need you need to have, put all the pieces of the puzzle together. It definitely makes sense. I, I could see that. And looking back in my SEO strategy with, with this brand, with my joshhall.co stuff, it was definitely a one step at a time. Now, I will say my very favorite thing to do is interviews. That's by far my favorite strategy because <laughs> the backlinks come naturally because I don't right. need to actually, and I like writing. I really enjoy writing, but um, I find interviews to be my, my personal favorite. So now personally, would you say that's one of your favorite things to do? Or do you do you like getting behind the, the keyboard and doing right. like research and stuff. Yeah. To be honest, my favorite part about my job is working on the product. So building okay. a, a platform that would sort of help. Um, obviously I get to do, I get to spend very little amount of my time on that nowadays, obviously, because I have to get out there and start promoting Respana and then they're like, Hey, come use our platform. <laughs> so gotcha. uh, my, my favorite part, I'm a, I'm a product nerd. So I like to build build new things that would help save people time and, and be useful. Obviously I love making connections with awesome people like yourself and getting on interviews and chat, but sometimes uh, for me, I would say if I had to pick one thing that I could like, if I could have a job, I would want to be like a, product manager. Like that would be gotcha. something that I think I could do. Well, day. the reason, the reason <laughs> I asked that is because yeah, these are, there are these different strategies and I agree. It's definitely like a puzzle. And I, I personally feel like Grab it, do what you do best and what you enjoy doing. And if you can hire out the rest, then awesome. Once you get to that point, that's what I've learned to do with my brand now is I'm going to do a lot of things, figure out what I'm good at, what I like to do. And then as soon as I can, I'm going to off board and hire out stuff that either I don't like to do, or it's just not well suited for me. And in the blogging world, this is huge because I think a lot of people get tripped up because they just, they stop or they're like, ah, oh, I just don't have the time. I don't feel like blogging. I had to keep up with my clients. And then 
their, their strategy just stops. And this is an interesting point too, when it comes to like stopping, uh, blogging or stopping an SEO strategy. You, you said it earlier, it's ever evolving. It's always changing. It's ongoing. SEO is ongoing. Um, and you mentioned my podcast being up there in the, what was it? The top, like one and a half percent or something like that. One and a half percent. That's right. (laughs) Now is that all podcasts or a certain category? Is that like under entrepreneurship or business or something? We use a, a podcast uh, director called Listen Notes that feed into Respond on the back end. And mm-hmm. they use several metrics like the RSS, how how popular the RSS feed is, how many okay. downloads you get. And um, matter of fact, there's, that, there's a lot of podcasts out there that get almost no listeners. So you know, I would say the top 10% well, are really what what are getting some exposure and, and you're in the top 10% or the top 10% that, that actually That's awesome. get listeners. Yeah. Which is I awesome. I need to start using Respona. Uh, so you need to increase your sponsorship packages. There we go. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. That is the plan. That's the next, the next yeah, circle plan. Circle guys, next be careful. That's yeah. Right. That's, I am definitely going to be doing more sponsor stuff, but you know, the, here's, here's where I mentioned that same thing with blog posts. Like a lot of people feel like I'm too late to the blogging game or in my case, it's like, I could start a podcast, but everyone's doing a podcast now, but not everyone is doing it consistently. Or a lot of people did a bunch of episodes and they just stopped. And I know from experience, consistency beats everything online. So if you do it consistently and as long as it's good, of course, you will start getting better rankings and you will start seeing results, whether it's a podcast or a blog or whatever it is. I have a, a colleague in the Squarespace space, uh, page who built her brand completely off of social media, which is really uncommon for a lot of entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. nowadays, but it was completely through blogging and it was just blogging and email. Those are her two channels, but she's done blog posts consistently, good blog posts, some really in depth, some just more surfacey, but she's done it consistently for years now. And it works like, I mean, I just want to, I just want to say just because the competition, there's a lot of people doesn't mean that everyone's active. And that's a big difference because Google, right. all these search engines, they know, right. They can tell what's active and what's kind of dead. So you know, one other thing I wanted to say, Josh, I feel like it would be important for the audience who are listening, who had a lot of, a lot of our freelancers, people run work in the service based industry and run an agency. Uh, sometimes, if you're in, a, for example, a web design agency, you're a one man show and you're competing against keywords that are not necessarily feasible for based on the amount of resources that you have. One thing I always recommend is that package this service and offer it to your clients who have the budget and the resources for it. Uh, we have quite a lot of agencies that charge quite a lot of money for uh, just using a responder in the background and running a lot of these outreach campaigns in the background. And and one thing you also want to consider is that if you're offering web design, a lot of people who are building a website, guess what else they're going to need? They need to actually get people to their website. And, right, right. and, and SEO, obviously, and, and the outreach aspect in building backlinks comes uh, with it in, in a package. So... Uh, learning about these techniques and and getting good at it. So even if you are unable to blog yourself or don't have the resources to hire people to do this for you and uh, offer this as a service, you know, if I got fired out of Respondent, that's probably the first thing I would do. You reach out to some companies that are either product companies, SaaS companies uh, that have multi-million dollar budgets and they don't have the know-how or the resources to do it themselves. We actually have a Respondent Guru Hub that we invite our customer base to like, hey, do you have some free time? Can you offer? We, we get so many businesses coming to Respond and they're looking for people to run this. They're like, hey, this is awesome. We know we're going to have to do this, but we don't have the resources. We don't know how exactly because we need someone on top of it. So becoming a person who can actually offer this as a service and you can use it to re- like respond to kind of streamline the process is, is a very profitable business model that I'm surprised to be honest why more people aren't doing so. We actually have one of our team members leaving our team to offer the link building as a service to our clients. <laughs> so yeah, like, I mean, I think, well, to be honest, like, I, I think it might depend on somebody as far as what they're interested in. Like a lot of my audience, yeah, this is, like, you're right. Like it's, it is something, yeah, you could, you could sign up for Respond and you can use it for yourself, but it's not a cost if you turn it around and use it as an investment for your business and make this a service right. for other people. I totally agree. And I will say a lot of my students who are on the, on the top tier and doing like several six figures now, web design is a part 
of their suite of services. A big part of it is what you're talking about with SEO, digital marketing, and some other services. Um, But I I think personally, yeah, it might just come down to like, does somebody want to do that? I personally don't want to do that. So I, I, but a lot of people do. And a lot of people might hire that out. Like if I was still running my agency Mm -hmm. and I wasn't teaching and doing what I'm doing now, then I would have 100% have like a wing of the, you know, the services be this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's something you can easily train a relatively junior person to replicate for you. So once you get a hang of it, Josh, it's something I don't do a single outreach email myself every day mm-hmm. because I've got a million other things I have to take care of. Right. That'd be but, eight hours a day. Yeah, exactly. So it's a full-time job. So it's something that you can easily, once you build a blueprint, Hey, here's a template, here's a strategy, just go follow this. <laughs> and it is something that you can easily hire someone who, who is a junior staff member who can easily replicate these for you. So it's not necessarily something that you have to do yourself. Design is different. You can't delegate that. But once you build a process when it comes to link building and pr- promotion and outreach, that's something that's easily delegatable. Not sure that's yeah. a word, but... Uh, delegatable. It is here now. By golly, it is. I love <laughs> making words up. I there love <laughs> making words up on the podcast. Uh, no, that's great, Farzad. This is this has been awesome, man. I, I've, we've really covered a lot of strategies, and we've weaved in and out of pretty much everything that I've seen with SEO that's working. Yeah. Um, now this is interesting too because we haven't talked about like local businesses, which I'm mm-hmm. sure is a whole other thing. But as far as like us building our brands online, which a lot of people listening are in areas of the world where their ideal clients maybe not be, they might not be local. So they want to know how to get ahead online. And a lot of what we talked about from an SEO perspective, that's it. Like the partnerships, the the relationship aspect of all this and the link building. I mean, this is really, yeah, it takes some time, but it really does, it pays off. And as long as you have the, the basic things in there with a good website that converts and you're a cool person, you just want to work with somebody that that's the name of the game there. I feel so yeah, yeah, we no. this has been great, man. Um, I do have kind of a final question for you as we wrap this up. I'm curious. So do you want to offer anything for my audience? We should have talked about this before, but like a lot of the, a lot of my guests will do like, you know, website slash Josh Hall. Do you, do you want to do something like that for Respana? Right. So I would love, love to, and normally we don't do offering and discounts because we try to keep our platform very affordable I, for everybody. I get it. I totally understand. But one thing I would highly recommend people to do is two things. One, download that free ebook from Visme. Just Google Visme marketing strategy, read through it. It's at least the first chapter, which I talk about content marketing. And it is going to give you at least the basis of, hey, why are we doing this? How exactly you need to go about building a website? And that also helps you as a designer to be able to build websites that are actually consistent with best practices when it comes to SEO. And, and, and that's one thing, yeah, it's a free resource to highly recommend. And I've re- written it myself, by the way, but this is not something I've delegated. I spent about close nice. to a few hundred hours in writing that thing. And also um, the Outreach Strategy Hub on our Respondo website. So go to respondo.com at the very bottom. It's the Outreach, Respondo Outreach Strategy Hub. Go ahead and take a look at some of these strategies just so, just so you kind of get a sense of, okay, what are some of these outreach strategies that Firezo talks about? And it's ungated, it's free also. Feel free to take a look. Don't go just jump straight in and start paying for tools that you don't necessarily know how to use or how to utilize first. I would start educating my, myself in the SEO game a little, have an idea of, okay, exactly. Here are some of the things you can do. And 90% yeah. of them you can do without any particular tools and, and manual work. And then once you get to the point, you're like, hey, this is great. I don't have the time to do it my, myself or don't have the, um, a bandwidth to be able to replicate. Then you can start using some of these tools to help you save some time. Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's a great way to go. And of course, we'll have all that stuff linked in. And, and yeah, I mean, I pre- look, I appreciate when everyone says, I, I don't want to offer a deal because we keep our price points low. I actually just talked about that with um, the owner, uh, the co-founder of Fathom Analytics, Paul Jarvis. And he said the same thing. He's like, we're not going to do a discount because we, we we just keep it across the board. And I respect that. So all good on my end, man. Um, my last question here for you, Farzad, is I'm curious what would be, so for somebody who's interested in this and they're like, okay, I'm, I'm down. I definitely went up my SEO game, but I'm still quite overwhelmed with all the things we've talked about. What would you say would be the best place to start it just to, to get going? Write one blog post a month. Love it. I think and we can all agree. Everybody can do that. <laughs> yes. If you can't do that, then 
we, there's some work to do to clear up your time and figure something out. Yes. One blog post a month. And would you recommend like sharing just what you know about a certain topic or, uh, would it be kind of open-ended to what you want to write about or, you know, who your competitors are and stuff like that? Sure. So we have a process for how we sort of prioritize keywords. And again, I'm not sure how much, how deep you want me to get in there. Can I wrap it up in four or five minutes? Is that okay with you? Yeah, Josh? yeah let's know. do that. We're yeah, that should be good. Getting short yeah. on time. Okay. I'm going to keep it on to that. So we have a process of what I call op finding opportunity keywords. So what you get to write about is actually quite scientific at our team at Respond and Visme. We don't just write from the heart. We have a strategy and that strategy is quite simple. So what we do is to, as I mentioned very briefly throughout the interview, we want to prioritize our keywords because there's an unlimited number of keywords to write about, right? There's yeah. infinite I find that extremely keywords. overwhelming, by the way. Yeah, that's why, that's, why I hate, yeah. that's why I hate keyword research. I'm like, there's like a thousands and thousands. So I'm just... <laughs> right. Yeah. So let me give you a formula that you can easily have a scientific method of prioritizing okay. them. And that's something that we still do every single day by our content team. And that is... Ideally, just from a theoretical perspective, we want to identify keywords in our space that have the highest amount of volume possible, lowest amount of competition possible, and highest amount of commercial intent possible. So again, high volume, low competition, and high commercial yep. intent. Got so it. those are the three metrics you want to pop into a formula I'm going to discuss in order to go and have a prioritized list of keywords. So what you want to do is if you have a parent topic, so like, for example, if your website is about web design, that's your parent topic. For us, respond is link building. That's our parent topic. For Viz means presentation. That's our parent topic. You want to run that parent keyword through an SEO tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush. These are paid tools. If you're just starting out, I would recommend trying a tool like, uh, trying out a tool called Ubersuggest. They have a really solid free version. And also they're much significantly cheaper than Ahrefs. I should say if you're too... I did an episode a while back on the basics of SEO with a lot of these tools. So I'll, I'll link that as well. It was episode 54 yeah. for anyone who's curious. Yeah, absolutely. And those are the two tools I recommend. I trust and SEMrush if you're looking to ditch out a hundred bucks a month. Uh, and that pays off. I mean, we use Ahrefs ourselves and it's it's a pretty good investment. But anyway, yeah. again, you don't have the budget for it. Don't worry about it. Uber Suggest does 90% of what these tools do. And uh, basically, they give you three metrics. One is the number of clicks that a keyword gets. So a click is when somebody actually clicks on a search result for that keyword. Not necessarily the number of volume because some mm. keywords have a feature snippet that people just get their answer and they don't even enter the website. So that's a great point. Yeah. So you want to get the number of clicks and that's a representative volume. Two is the keyword difficulty metric. So a lot of these SEO tools give you a number from zero to 100, 100 being super difficult that's dominated by Google and Microsoft. And zero is like very easy. It's just like, you don't need any backlinks. So you can just put together content. You're almost guaranteed up in the search list because it's almost nothing about it. Normally the keywords somewhere are somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. And um, we, we have a keyword difficult metric. So for each one of these keywords, these tools are going to give you a metric and how difficult it is. And we have a rule of thumb. We automatically ignore keywords that have a keyword difficulty higher than our domain rating. Okay. So oh, a domain cool. rating or a domain authority is a metric also from zero to a hundred that determines um, um, how authoritative your website is. And that's directly relevant or directly correlated with the number of backlinks you have pointed to your website. So if you're just starting out, take out some of the keywords that are, that are out of your league, right? And up to this point, I think we're DR uh, 77 now. So we just take, well, I mean, Keyword difficulty of 77 is very high. So like yeah, we, we right, almost right. cover pretty much all keywords. Um, but what I'm trying to say is a good rule of thumb. Again, there's no scientific theory behind it. It's just how we do things. Basically saying, hey, don't go after keywords that are super uh, yeah. competitive. Uh, so take out the keywords that have a keyword difficulty higher than a domain rating. And the ones that are left, you, you want to save that in a little spreadsheet. And the third metric is going to be your commercial intent. And the way we measure commercial intent is the cost per click of that keyword. So the reason why is because advertisers like money. So if somebody's betting on a certain keyword, it's likely they're spending money. And the yeah. higher they're willing to bet for that keyword, it's an indicator that, they, that they're making more money. So that's great. So we're going to use the cost per click, which is not even the SEO metric. It's, it's an AdWords metric. Uh, but we use that cost per click of that keyword 
as an indication of commercial intent. Now you pop it in a formula. So if you have a little spreadsheet in Google Sheets, you pop it in a formula is what we call the, op, I called it the Farzad score. Our team's like, hey, this is too tacky. Nice. <laughs> Landed <laughs> on the opportunity score. So the okay. opportunity score is the amount of clicks your uh, keyword gets multiplied by one over keyword difficulty, because you want to do it in reverse, obviously, the higher the keyword difficulty, the bad, the worse it is. And multiply by one plus your cost per click. So what that formula does mathematically, I don't mean to go too nerdy on you today, Josh, is that it will automatically, once you multiply uh, these three metrics together for all of your keywords under the same parent topic, it gives you a relative number that doesn't mean anything on its own, but relative to each of these keywords, it gives you a metric that wants to sort of descending it automatically, mathematically gotcha. prioritizes keywords that have the highest amount of volume, lowest amount of competition, highest amount of commercial intent. Commercial intent. Got it. Got it. Now you got a list to go through. And that's numbered. Go. So they're like, okay, it's number one. It's kind of one. similar. Yeah, you probably saw my face go a little cross-eyed when I had to start thinking about math there. Uh, <laughs> but it, it kind of reminds me of what Michelle, my, my SEO gal, I, I call her my, my SEO guru because that's kind of what she does. Similar. Um, I, I would call yours like the, the Farzad zone, something like that. If we want to get really cheesy, I definitely think you should copyright that. Um, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And either way, I want to back up your statement. Start simple, one blog post a month. I gave myself light at the end of the tunnel when I started doing tutorials once a week for 12 weeks. I just went for it and committed to that. That's another strategy I recommend with SEO. So yeah, hopefully hopefully that helps. And I think it's a great place to, to, to help people just get going with this if they haven't already. So man, we covered a lot. This has been really cool. We, we, we took a deep dive into some stuff, but we covered a lot. And I really think this will be beneficial because I always love talking SEO to people who are in the game because every time I do, every time I feel like people are SEO experts, I find out that we're all, there's really not much of a difference once you know the basics between yeah. getting massive results and millions exactly. of results. It's what you're, what you're doing is just at scale. It seems like you get the principles down, you do a few things at work and you do it at scale eventually. So, um, exactly. Yeah. And I don't consider myself an SEO expert, by the way, Josh, I, there, uh, the more you learn about these things, the more you realize, Oh, I don't actually know anything. I don't know what I'm doing, but, uh, that's, but that's but the, once thing, you get the that's basics every, down. Every time I, I interview a quote unquote SEO expert, everyone says that and it makes me feel so much better. So yeah, this has been really cool, man. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll have all the links. There. I definitely recommend everyone checking out respana.com, which we'll have linked. And if it's like, like you said, you know, if it's a good fit for you and your business, definitely utilize it. And then by golly, sell it, sell it as a service, make that <laughs> recurring cheddar. So man, Farzad, thank you for coming, man. This was a, this was a fun time. And uh, I don't always love talking SEO, but I enjoyed this one. So thanks for your time. Thanks for having me on the show, Josh. This was really fun. Awesome. Cheers, man. Hey friends, it's Josh here. I just wanted to mention a couple quick things before you head out. First off, if you've been enjoying the show, please consider leaving a podcast review. I personally read all the podcast reviews. I love hearing your thoughts and feedback on the show. And it also really helps grow this podcast. You can do that easily if you go to joshhall.co slash podcast review, and you can leave a review wherever you listen to the show. And then I also wanted to make sure you know that for all the extras on every one of these podcast episodes, you can go to joshhall.co slash podcast. We have a post there for every episode, which includes full transcriptions, timestamps, and all the links and resources that we mentioned. So just go to joshhall.co slash podcast for all the extra goodies. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next.